Rwanda's Volcanoes National Park attracts thousands of visitors each year. Today, conservationist Ian Redmond and wildlife officer Edgar Kaislin from the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization will meet the inhabitants of these forests. What's happening is that uh, we're within a very short distance of the family of gorillas who have just recently been feeding here. This is all where gorillas have been feeding. There's bits of celery and they, uh, they peel the celery and eat the inside part and it tastes like celery. Unlike us, mountain gorillas are strict vegetarians. They feed on more than 200 species of plants, some of which only grow in these wet, high-altitude equatorial rainforests. Gorillas are so closely adapted to this habitat, they cannot live anywhere else. Thanks to relentless efforts to protect the gorillas and their ecosystem, their numbers have risen steadily over recent years to a total of almost 800 individuals. But now, climate change threatens that success. Mountains like, like islands, they, they are very much affected by, by climate change. And in particular, uh, in Africa, there have been estimates that uh, the average increase in, in temperature will be more than in other parts of the world. So it is, of course, expected uh, that um, due to warming, the vegetation might move up, upwards and the animals probably have little chances else than to, to follow uh, their uh, ideal and preferred habitat. In this scenario, they will be pushed further up the mountain until there's nowhere left to go. Rwanda is Africa's most densely populated country. Its rapidly growing population, combined with the fact that the majority of its people are subsistence farmers, create massive demand for land. Furthermore, Rwanda's hilly landscape is prone to erosion. The challenge facing Rwanda and the mountain gorillas is not unique. A new report by the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, or FAO, warns that up to a third of all animal and plant species worldwide are at risk of extinction due to climate change. But there are successes here that serve as examples of how to preserve wildlife in a changing climate. These projects acknowledge the needs of both people and animals. Matthew Munyarazi belongs to the Batwa, a community of traditional hunter-gatherers. Matthew and the gorillas used to share a common resource, but today there is simply not enough forest left to sustain hunting and gathering together with the gorillas' habitat. This project has allocated land to the Batwa, where they can grow trees which shelter crops and can be used for firewood, building materials and handicrafts. Mm. This project alone has seen a quarter of a million trees planted over the last four years. In this way, Matthew and his fellow Batwa people contribute to the reforestation of Rwanda. The forests then act as a carbon sink, helping mitigate climate change, while also storing water for the country. In the face of climate change, projects like these are becoming increasingly important for the well-being of wildlife and for the world's growing population. As the FAO report stresses, only healthy ecosystems may be able to withstand and adapt to the impacts of climate change. Be it gorillas or polar bears, climate change threatens wildlife all over the planet. If the appropriate measures are not swiftly implemented, we might be the last generation to witness the wealth of biodiversity this planet still harbors. <laughs>